The next adventure for Batman begins in Detective Comics number 40 with a cover date of June 1940. The comic starts off with Bruce telling Dick that his fiancée Julie is acting in a motion picture for Argus Studios and he's going to go pay her a visit. Dick wonders if it's the new horror picture. Bruce is shown around the set and meets Mr. Bentley, the head of Argus Pictures, and he thinks Julie is going to be a star in no time. Kenneth Todd is the new star of the remake of the movie Dread Castle, and he's playing the Terror a character once played by the mega-famous actor Basil Carlo. Carlo is on set to wish Kenneth good luck and meet the man taking over his once-famous role. As the crew talks, a man named Ned Norton shows up and starts to argue with Mr. Bentley. He wants to know why he's being taken off as Dread Castle's director. Bentley reminds him that he took off for four days with no word and Bentley fires him right then and there. Norton swears that this movie won't get finished without him. Bentley, Julie, and Bruce are talking when a woman's voice is heard yelling to someone named Fred Walker, and she says they're through, and that's final. The woman's voice comes from the female star in the movie, Lorna Dane, and Bentley quips that she does this to a lot of men. She's a gold digger. Lorna tells Fred that she can't be with an actor who hasn't had roles in a long time, and Fred thought they were in love. Lorna scoffs at the notion. But Fred does not take this well, and he threatens to kill her. Bruce and Julie are set to go home when they notice an odd-looking man approaching Mr. Bentley. This man, Roxy Brenner, a mobster, who is asking Bentley if he's ready to accept his offer of protection. Bentley refuses to pay protection and tells Brenner to leave, and Brenner does, but not before telling Bentley he's made a big mistake and he can't be held responsible if anything happens to his precious movie stars. No one talks to Roxy Brenner that way. Back at Wayne Manor, Bruce has a sneaking suspicion that something is going to happen at that studio. There seems to be an aura of hatred there. The next day, Bruce is there with Julie to watch on set. They're filming the murder scene of the Countess by the Terror. They start the filming and the Terror goes in. Prepare to die, Countess. While this is happening, in a darkened corner of the set, a grisly face watches on muttering how these fools play at death, but he does not. The Terror goes in for the kill and the lights go out. There's a large commotion, confusion, and then a loud scream. Someone gets the lights on, and there on the floor is Lorna Dane, dead. The crew and Bruce are horrified as our killer revels in his ghastly crime. The police investigate for a week but turn up nothing. Julie is worried. She talks to Bruce about the studio continuing with the movie, and she is now the lead. And they're filming the same scene in which Lorna was killed, and she fears for her life too. Bruce tells her not to worry. The killer only wanted Lorna dead. In reality, Bruce is worried and tells Dick to get his suit on. They're going out. Batman and Robin pull up to the studio and sneak in. Inside, Brenner is shaking down Bentley for the protection money. Bentley thinks Brenner had Lorna killed when suddenly, Batman and Robin come in and start to kick ass on Brenner's henchmen. The fight continues and our heroes take them out quickly while Brenner tries to escape. Batman grabs him and makes him talk. Brenner didn't actually have Lorna killed. He tried to cash in on the murder, thinking Bentley would pay the protection money. Batman kicks Brenner and his men out of the studio, telling them never to come back. Standing in awe is Mr. Bentley, thinking of offering the Batman a movie contract. Batman questions Bentley about who else would want to kill Lorna Dane. The only people he can come up with are Fred Walker, Lorna's jilted ex-lover, and Ned Norton, the man who Bailey fired the other day. Batman and Robin go to Fred Walker's house, which is right next to the movie studio lot. Robin keeping watch by the almost mobile, while Batman searches the premises. Inside the house it seems as if no one is home, and Batman searches the last closet door, and inside, hanging on a coat hook, is Fred Walker in terrible shape. Batman gets him down and asks who did this to you. With Walker's last breath, he mutters, Clayface. Clayface, he... And then he dies. Batman ponders who this Clayface could be with Norton and Brenner out of the question. He turns to Ned Norton, the ex-director, and Kenneth Todd, the new star of Dread Castle. Meanwhile, outside Walker's home, Robin notices a light coming on from the Dread Castle set and thinks he should investigate. As he approaches, the mysterious Clayface spies on him from the darkened window of the Dread Castle itself. Robin enters the castle and walks up the spiraling stairs to the top of the tower. Coming to the last turn, he is unaware of Clayface hiding and waiting to kill the boy Wonder. Out of the shadows, Clayface dives at an unsuspecting Robin, knife in hand. But Robin is trained well, and he ducks and uses Clayface's momentum to his advantage and throws him over his shoulder. 
One on one with Clayface, Robin steps back to gain his bearings, but slips on the lantern he used to see in the dark castle. Clayface drags the fallen Robin outside to the top of the castle and throws him off the side, down to the moat surrounding the castle set. Just as he's being thrown, Batman, who went looking for Robin, sees his protege hit the water and dives in after him, pulling him to safety. When Robin regains consciousness, he remembers the attacker at the top of the castle, so he and Batman go back to find this so-called Clayface. Batman and Robin search, but no luck in finding Clayface. Batman surmises that he must have been up here scouting his next murder. The next morning, we see Clayface donning his costume of death, and he ponders to himself, as all psychotic villains do. He is ready to kill his next victim, Lorna Dane's replacement, Julie, who is filming the same death scene that Lorna was the day she was killed. On the set of Dread Castle, Julie is filming her scene totally unaware of Clayface in the rafters with a throwing knife trained on her. He readies his throw, but out of nowhere, his wrist is ensnared with a tight rope. With the speed of thought, Batman tackles the evil Clayface. The director and crew see Batman fighting the mysterious Clayface on the catwalk. He tells the cameraman to focus on the fight as these shots will be awesome. Clayface lands a heavy punch on the Batman and dives off the catwalk clinging to a rope trying to make a getaway. After landing on the set, the once thought disposed of Robin surprises Clayface with a kick to the head and a punch to the face. He definitely deserved those two. After getting punked by Robin, Batman ties Clayface up and begins to take off all his makeup, revealing the killer to be... Basil Carlo, the star of the original Dread Castle. He was enraged that they were remaking his old films and he wasn't in the spotlight and he wanted to shut down the movie. But it was also more than that. He had played so many horror roles that they had taken over his mind and he used the makeup from one of his old starring roles, Clayface. He used this disguise to kill Lorna and attempt to kill Julie, but that doesn't explain why he killed Fred Walker. Carlo tells them that Walker recognized him in the Clayface makeup and was trying to blackmail him with knowing that he killed Lorna. Carlo looks at Batman and swears vengeance. After all is said and done, the director thinks Batman and Robin are sensational and should stick with him and make movies. They decline and Julie praises them as real heroes, if only Bruce was so dashing as this Batman fellow.